Hey, it's 2023. Happy New Year to all of you. I uh, hope you're having a great, you're off to a great start at least. I can't tell you how excited I am to get back here in our studio at uh, Blue Collar Wealth. We got a lot of great ideas for content that you've all been asking for, and we're going to put together as much of that as we can this year. But to kick off this first episode, we're talking New Year's resolutions, right? Of course we are. It's that time of year again when everybody wants to do the best intentions to do things a little bit differently, get their finances in order for the next 12 months, maybe even longer. I'm going to share a little secret with you right now, though. And this comes from me being in the financial industry for 24 years, roughly. Uh, I've talked to hundreds and hundreds of people about these very things, these changes they want to make in their lives. And only a small percentage of those people actually succeed in making those changes. Although, in my opinion, there's one common thing that helps those few people succeed. In this episode of Blue Collar Wealth, I'm going to tell you what that is, what that one thing is. And I'm also going to throw in some pointers to make sure that you can get that one common thing into your life. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Blue Collar Wealth Podcast. And as I said earlier, it's a new year, and we here at Stonehouse are excited about what that means for our clients and for those of you who are listening to this and possibly interested in becoming our clients or just want to make yourself a better person. This whole podcast is meant to give bite-sized lessons and information sharing so that you can be better informed about things going on in your life. So some things you may be able to solve on your own. Uh, but other items you might look for help. Uh, we help our clients through all kinds of topics on matters discussed here on this podcast. And this gives us a chance to share it with you so that you get a better taste of what we do on a daily basis. With all that said, I'll dive right into this episode and that secret common thing that I talked about earlier. But as always, don't interrupt that with a good quick story. <laughs> to, I want to illustrate a point that I'm about to make. And so I think the two most common things that people set their New Year's resolutions around are money and health. And I know there are many gym memberships that are open in January with all the best intentions. However, by February, a massive percentage of those people, they just stop showing up to the gym. Do you think that that's because they stopped caring at all about their health? No, absolutely not. It's because they had some bad habits going into those resolutions and they didn't change anything about those bad habits before or after making that resolution. Instead, they simply said that they were going to do something different, but just saying it doesn't change it. You see, when you've been doing things over and over and over again for many months or many years, that's called a habit. And whether it's eating or exercising or managing your finances. So let me ask you this. What do you think has a better chance of surviving? The 20 bad habits that you've had for the last several years or that one promise or thing or resolution that you've made in the past week? I'll spare you the suspense of thinking too hard on that one. The bad habits will almost always drown out the best intentions. So think of it from a tobacco smoker's perspective. If you say, hey, tomorrow I'm going to quit smoking. If that's all you say and maybe all you do or change, then you basically haven't given yourself a, even a chance of success. Smoking is a habit and it's surrounded by all kinds of cues that remind you of that habit. A cigarette when you have coffee in the morning, during your breaks at work throughout the day, uh, after dinner or while watching TV. The only way to successfully really break yourself of bad habits and follow through on what you think are positive new habits or resolutions is to create new procedures or new cues in your life. You want an easy example? I'll, I'll take me for example. I have always been one of those guys that said I was going to go to the gym a lot more than I was in the previous years. So this is my year to do it. And then I find myself never having enough time or making excuses and just don't feel like working out. Several years ago, I changed that up. I changed a couple of those cues in my life. The first thing I did was to put it on my calendar every single day. I want to work out. Go work out. 
The second thing I did was I changed the action when I got to the gym each time. Instead of jumping right into some sort of exercise, I throw my headphones on and I walk over to the corner on a mat somewhere and I do about like three to five minutes of stretching with the music cranking, right? So why am I telling you this? What did these two changes do for me? Does it make me a fitness guru or some sort of bodybuilder? Sadly, you can see that it does not. Uh, but it obviously, it does do something. And what it does for me is it allows me to meet my goal, which was to get to the gym far more than I had ever done in previous years. Putting it on my calendar gets it right in front of me. Every single day I see, go to the gym. And I'm embarrassed to admit to you just how many times I still don't feel like going to that gym. But because it's on my calendar, I at least get myself going and get there. Once there, I immediately go through those motions I talked about it. Headphones, crank the tunes, go through some stretching. By that point, I'm into it, right? I'm ready to go. And that is the secret that I'm talking about, the one common thing. Have you figured it out? It's called momentum. Instead of viewing my goal or resolution as this big nebulous thing, this rough idea of kind of what I'd like to do someday, instead I've broken it down into smaller, more manageable cues, which eventually became habits for me. Okay, so how can you change some cues in your life to the point where they can become habits? And then those habits help you succeed in keeping your resolutions. Let's dig into that. It really doesn't matter what financial resolution you've made, but if you've made one already, you're probably listening to this video still. So think about whatever that is to you, but now think about breaking it up into those smaller, more manageable pieces. You already know what you want to do, but you must figure out what it takes to get you there. Let's make this a bit more complex and let's assume that you wanted to be pretty aggressive in your New Year's resolution by saying that you had three goals this year. One would be to pay down some of your debts. Two would be to save that special luxury item uh, that you've been dying to buy and so save up for that. And three would be to aggressively save toward your retirement. Uh, if you're wondering why I picked those three, it's because those are very common topic goals that our, our uh, clients uh, have, and then we help them work towards every day. So paying down your debts, how do we break this down? First, take a look at the total amount of debt that you have that you want to eliminate. Then determine when you want that debt completely paid off. Do some simple calculations, given the the terms involved with that debt and break it down into a monthly amount that you need to pay in order to have it completely paid off by the time you want. And what about saving for that special luxury item, right? We all have a couple big things. This is almost the same process, but in reverse. So first determine how much that item will cost and when you want to have enough money saved up to actually buy it. Then determine where you're going to invest that money from now until that time and set the expected rate of return for that kind of investment over that period of time. Then run some basic calculations to determine how much you need to save each month in order to have enough to buy that luxury item by the date you want. Pretty simple. Third was uh, aggressively saving toward your retirement in my example. So this is always less black and white than the other two options because there's always so much unknown about retirement, right? We don't know how long we're, uh, uh, before we retire, uh, we don't know how long our retirement will last or exactly what even we'll be doing during retirement. Often the best laid plans when it comes to considering retirement involve painting with very broad strokes and very wide ranges in order to allow yourself flexibility. We always preach about flexibility and how important it is, extremely important for retirees because you never know what life will throw at you. And having the ability to adapt uh, can take a lot of that stress away during retirement. So if you're looking to add poor, more per month toward your retirement goals, the amount you can afford to put toward that is probably very likely dependent on those other two goals we talked about. So as I said, this example is a bit more complex than just having one single New Year's resolution, but I want to point out to you that the process is really the same no matter what your goal or your resolution. 
clearly define it, break it down into smaller pieces, and then map out a plan that you can execute, follow through with, and most of all, gain momentum. Let that momentum help you build excellent habits throughout the whole year. And one more thing on momentum. I really recommend you use your calendar as the launching pad for these resolutions. Mark down every month to check the monthly payments or investments you're making. Mark down every quarter to review the progress that you're making on each of these goals and don't hesitate to adjust or adapt them to ensure that they remain viable. And also mark down once a year, probably around the holidays, usually a good time this time of year, to review these goals and your resolutions so that you can cross off the ones you've achieved and replace them with new ones. That's great momentum. Remember, life is constantly changing around us, so even the best laid plans need to change with it. And lastly, I'll wrap up by talking about what your specific goals might be going into this new year. If they're anything similar to what I've used here in this example, you might find yourself having some difficulty determining the amounts, deciphering the terms that are involved with your debt and your savings rates, or how all these things will interact with each other and other things that you have going on in your life at the same time. That is not uncommon. Don't take it personally. If that's you, if you're feeling overwhelmed, you are not alone. In fact, most of us have many moving parts happening every year all the time, and those moving parts can sometimes cause confusion, which ultimately causes many of us to do nothing differently than we did the year before. In previous videos, I've talked about common savings methods, such as the bucket strategy, right? That's pretty straightforward strategy. It's really just about defining each bucket or item or reason for saving uh, in your life and then working toward filling up each of those buckets in a way that's designed to, to make your life better. In addition to that, we do a lot of retirement planning for our clients and we use a process called the future you. The future you is, is, is a wonderful financial planning tool that we use that allows us to look at where you are today what you're doing now that's working toward your goals. And then we use projections based on those assumptions to see what your future might look like. And as I said earlier, these are broad strokes and broad ranges that we're looking at, but it really does help to give you a very good visual perspective on where you're headed. I'm a visual person. I really enjoy those future you projections. Uh, I bring the bucket method, though, and the future you to your attention so that you know that these tools are available right here at Stonehouse. And it might come as a shock to you how absolutely easy we are to work with. We run these scenarios and look at analysis like this all the time for folks just like you. So don't hesitate to reach out to us through email, through the links on this page, or simply over the phone. So... Hey, I thank you for listening to this first podcast of the year. Uh, I hope this video is super helpful for you. And if we can make any part of your life a bit easier, please reach out to us. That's what we do here at Stonehouse.